was born to be royal. I was made to be free, but I was torn from the garden when that devil. Formed from the soil, I got dirt inside of me. Well, I was born to be royal. Well, I was made for glory. Church. It's great to kind of sort of see you. I can. I've got a picture of you up in my brain here. And I am I just want you to know you're looking really, really good. Good news. So, whether you're joining us online or whether you're joining us physically actually in the church this morning, thank you so much for spending some of your time with us. So, you join us in the middle of our summer series through the book of Proverbs called A Word to the Wise. And this morning, I'm thrilled to be able to tell you, thrilled that Erin Ogilvie Fisher, my niece, is going to be making her teaching debut this morning. Incredible. I love it. So, Erin, I know you're going to do just an absolutely awesome job. Can't wait to hear what God has laid on your heart to share with us this morning. Now, I know we're right in the middle of summer, and believe me, I don't want summer to end anytime soon. I'm a big summer person. But is there anything that we could be doing this summer that would help prepare us for the fall and beyond. And I'm glad you asked. 
So Aaron has already been starting to talk to us about the two-year plan, which is taking us to our 25th anniversary, 25 years, high view, amazing. And with your help, we've identified three areas of focus for this two-year plan. And the first area I want to talk about is evangelism. It's about telling others of God's grace in our lives. Now, we know we're not all spiritually gifted evangelists. That's absolutely true. But we all have a story to tell of God's work in our lives. Every one of us. I've heard a lot of these stories, and they're amazing stories. So this fall, it's our hope that everyone at Highview will be able to participate in a seminar through E3 Ministry. And it's going to help each one of us learn, very simply, how to tell our stories. What would our life was like before Christ stepped in, how our lives changed when he did, and what God is doing in our lives today. And I love it. But that's in the fall. So what can we be doing in our lives today over the summer? So the organization we're working with is called E3 Ministry, and they have a division called I Am Second. And I'm going to encourage you to check out IamSecond.com online. I Am Second is all about stories, and they're stories of lives redeemed and transformed. And a lot of these stories, the people telling these stories that you would know, in sports or in entertainment or in, in other places. So I'm really going to encourage you to check them out. This is what it says actually on the I Am Second uh, webpage. We believe we are all beautifully broken. And it's at the heart of every I Am Second story we tell. So I encourage you, check it out. The second area of focus in our two-year plan is going to be an emphasis on prayer. Prayer. Connecting with our God. Do we need God right now? Oh my goodness. More than ever, we need our God. So what can we be doing this summer in the area of prayer? For many of us who struggle with prayer, an idea is during the summer that we find a good book to help us learn and understand prayer better. So, just so happens that here at Highview Community Church, we have books on prayer. Books like Timothy Keller's book, Prayer. And we have books by Philip Yancey on prayer and J.I. Packer on prayer. Now these books are at the reception, on the reception table at the church in the cafe area. And if you're coming to the church, you can take one of these books, just sign it out. There's a checkout journal right there and you can take one of these books. Or you could come to the church during the week, but just call first and make sure now, someone's going to be there to open the door for you, and you can pick one up then. Or, if you want one of these books, then just let one of the elders know, and we'll make sure that we deliver one to you as soon as we possibly can. So, one way or another, you can get one of these books that you can use for summer reading uh, to help you in this area, uh, area of prayer. And, just a quick shout out to Anne King for all the work that she does in preparing the prayer letter, the church prayer letter, every single week. And, and I just can't thank you enough uh, for what you do. The third area of focus in our two-year plan is about connecting, building into our community, bridging our generation gap, strengthening our community. And we have such a beautiful, God-ordained, God-created family and that God in His wisdom has brought together. And this summer, why not reach out to someone in the church that you haven't been able to speak to since this whole COVID thing started happening? You could give them a call. You could take someone out for coffee. You could go for a, a socially distanced lunch in the, in the park somewhere. But why not step out, reach out to somebody, and connect? And that would be a great thing to do in the summer. I think we're all missing each other, right? Yeah, I think so too. So three areas of focus for our two-year plan. Evangelism prayer, and connecting. Can you imagine what our church will be like in two years if we devote ourselves to these three things? It's going to be just absolutely incredible. Amazing. Okay, now, our senior pastor, Aaron Wildsmith, you're not going to believe this, Aaron Wildsmith is pregnant. It, it's true. It's true. And for those who have been able to attend church in person, you would know uh, that by looking at her. And if you haven't been able to come to the church, trust me, uh, Aaron is having a baby. It is true. So what does that mean for the church? 
when sometime in November the latest addition to the Wild Smith family is going to arrive. So the directors and elders of Highview had a meeting to discuss those individuals who might be able to step into Erin's role doing, during her maternity leave. And I'm very pleased to let you know that our very own Mishirian residence, Ruth Ann Brightup, has accepted the offer to become our interim pastor during Aaron's leave. So Aaron and Ruth Ann have already started a meeting to put the pieces together for this interim rule. Please be praying for the Wildsmith family and for the Bright Up family as that as all these plans start to take shape. And finally, I have more baby news of which Highview has absolutely no shortage. I am thrilled to let you know that the Heemstras, Kristen and Mark, delivered a healthy little boy Timothy Christian Heemstra on August 2nd this past Sunday, weighing in at 7 pounds, 8 ounces. Congratulations to the Heemstras. Okay, let's now prepare our hearts and our, our minds as we continue to worship our God.
Good morning, Kids Corner Kids. I am Juanita, and this is my grandson, Seton. And this morning, we're going to read a Bible story to you from the Tiny Tots Bible Story Book. And it's called Noah and the Flood. Long, long ago, people on the earth were very bad. They were so bad that God was sad he had made them. The only good person was Noah. God planned to send a big flood to punish the people of the earth. Thanks. But first, he told Noah to build a big boat an ark, so Noah and his family and some animals would be safe. So Noah built the ark and put two of each kind of animal in it. Then it rained for 40 days and nights. After everything on earth was underwater, the rain stopped. There was no one left on the earth except Noah and his family. When the water began to go down, the ark stopped on top of a mountain. Wow. After a while, Noah used birds to find out if he could leave the ark. Finally, the water dried up enough so everyone could come out of the ark. Yay! Yay! Noah and his family thanked God that they were alive. God showed them a rainbow to say that he would never destroy the earth by a flood again. <laughs> Nothing makes God sadder than when he has to punish the people he made and loves. The end.